Definition, the sovereign bestowing by God of regeneration and faith upon those whom He has chosen by His own will, since they are incapable of understanding the gospel and exercising faith, this bestowing must be irresistible. Okay, and I put in parentheses, otherwise it could not happen. Okay, if they flat out cannot get the gospel, they cannot understand it, there's no way that they can understand it, well then God's got to do something or else they'll never get it. Okay, and that's what Calvinists say total depravity, you cannot understand, so therefore God has to give it to you in an irresistible fashion. Okay, if you could resist it as a lost person, you would resist it, unless it's irresistible. Okay? I don't know if that all makes sense, but hopefully. Um, John Piper, one of the most famous Calvinists today, and I'm sure a good, decent man, says, the new birth is the effect of irresistible grace, an act of sovereign creation. So the new birth, regeneration, is the effect of irresistible grace. So God regenerates you without your faith, without any conditions on your part. Um, Calvinists say that if grace is not sovereign and irresistible, then man can boast. Uh, Arthur Pink, one of the most famous of all Calvinists, he has written books and books and books. He's dead. He's been with the Lord for some time. Um, he's got lots of books. And a lot of his stuff is terrific. He's quite a scholar. Okay, as if you can just get him away from Tulip. Okay. Um, Pink says that if man could of his own volition believe on Christ, then, and this is the quote, then the Christian would have ground for boasting and self-glorying over his cooperation with the Spirit. Okay, look at me. I am so smart. When the Spirit of God convicted me, I put my faith in Christ. I cooperated with the work of the Holy Spirit, and now I'm born again. Aren't I brilliant? <laughs> Have you ever heard a Christian say anything anywhere close to that? I never have. The only Christians that I've heard talking about salvation, it's all that, you know, hey, I was a lost sinner. I had no hope. There was no way in this world I was ever going to get to heaven. And somebody sat down with me and showed me the gospel, and I trusted Christ as my Savior, and it's all what God has done, and I praise Him. I mean, have you ever heard... <laughs> This is silly. What Christian has ever said, I'm going to get there because I'm smarter than the next guy? You know, I've, I've, got, I've got it up here, you know, and I'm going to heaven because no Christian ever said that. Okay, at least if they ever did, it wasn't anybody I ever heard. And I've been saved for over 50 years. So, uh, anyway. Um, that position seems to be logical, at least to the Calvinist, it seems to be logical, but is refuted by Scripture. Romans chapter 3, verse 27. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Faith excludes boasting. Works provide an opportunity to boast. If you're going to heaven because you're good, because you put money in the plate, because you attend church all the time, now you're boasting. But if you're going to heaven because you trusted Christ, all the glory goes to the Savior, not to you. I mean, you and I, what, what is the old song? I'm a sinner saved by grace. Okay, I'm only a sinner. Saved by grace. To God be the glory. Okay? Wow. Romans 4, 5. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Okay? Faith is not a work. It has no merit. Thus there are no grounds for boasting when you have put your faith in Christ. Um, 
Romans 5, 2. Oh, this verse, this is an important verse. Okay, here's, here's one for you to get. Romans 5, 2, by whom, which is by Christ, also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Okay, Calvinists say salvation is by grace. Now, a lot of them don't mean that. They say it's salvation by grace. But it's got to be irresistible grace, sovereignly bestowed grace. If it includes anything, even faith, then you've done away with it. Anyway, what does it say here? We have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. How did you get the grace? By faith. That's how you get God's grace, by faith. A lot of Calvinists believe you get God's grace when you get baptized as an infant. Okay, there's a lot of them, they really and truly believe that. That's where you get the grace, is water baptism. And of course, first of all, you had to be born into an elect family. And if your mom and dad are elect, then you're probably elect. And if you get baptized, well now we really know you're elect. Okay, um, but we get we have access to the grace of God through faith in Christ. That's how you get God's grace. Not anything you do, and certainly not your your physical pedigree. Okay, the fact that your parents are saved means nothing except hopefully you've got the opportunity to hear the gospel and trust Christ yourself. Okay, you've often heard people say, God has no grandchildren. Okay, well, He doesn't. Okay, we come to Christ, each and every one of us, as an individual. All right, so God's grace um, is not irresistible. It's not a work. Uh, it doesn't give us any ground for boasting. Uh, man can and does resist Christ. 2 Peter 3, 9, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, were not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Okay? Um, if God's grace was irresistible, then everyone would be saved. A while ago I read a, a definition that, about uh, limited atonement that God saves everyone, the atonement is for everyone that God intends to save? Well, it's very interesting because the word here in 2 Peter 3, 9, not willing, the word willing there means intention. Okay, it is not God's intention that any should perish. He doesn't want anybody to perish. He wants everybody to come to repentance. All right? But the Calvinist says God, or Christ only died for those God intends to save. Well, He intends to save everybody. So then shouldn't everybody be saved? Well, they should be, but obviously they're not. Uh, 1 Timothy 2.4, who will have all men to be saved. And, the, and will here means determination. God's, it's God's will. This is what, He not only wants it to happen, Okay, but it's His will that all men will be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. It's a stronger word. This is what God wants to happen. This is His will. This is what He's trying to accomplish. Again, if it's irresistible, then why isn't everyone saved? You know, if God's grace was irresistible, why would we witness? I am wonder, why are we here this morning? Okay, did everybody get as much sleep as they wanted last night? Okay, maybe you did, I didn't. Okay, it was a shock when that alarm went off this morning. Okay, it took me quite a while to find it. <laughs> um, I could have done it with another hour or so. You know, one of the benefits of retirement, and, and I'm, you know, retired supposedly, um, I set an alarm Sunday morning. And that's almost the only time I ever set an alarm. 
The rest of the time I can get up whenever it feels good to get up. Okay, it may be at five o'clock, but it's still when I feel like getting up. Okay? Um, okay. Um, the gospel invitations in the Bible all indicate people have a genuine choice to make. Irresistible grace is never stated in Scripture. You will not find a simple, straightforward, clear, understandable verse in the Bible that says Jesus died for only certain people that God chose ahead of time. It doesn't say it. It's not there. And if it's not there, why do people believe it? Okay, and an awful lot of it is because they made a decision about what sovereignty means. And now they've got to shoehorn the rest of the doctrines around salvation. They've got to shoehorn them into that definition. And if, they, if the scripture doesn't seem to fit, then they have to force it to fit. They've got to make it fit. Okay, which is not the way we treat the Bible. Okay, we are supposed to... Okay, a, a couple of words that some of you would be familiar with. Exegesis. Okay, exegesis. Big, fancy-sounding word. What does that mean? It means we get out of the Bible what's already in the Bible. Okay? It's there. We read it, and we get it out. Okay? We're taking from the Bible what God put in. Eisegesis means it came from here and I force it into the scripture. I'm making the Bible say what I want it to say, which is not proper. No, God speaks. If, if we do that, is it the word of God any longer? No, it's my word. Okay, the ideas come from me, not from God. Okay, it's, it's no longer the Word of God. It's my Word. Um, logic, and a lot of Calvinism, is, it's, it's, some of it is actually logical. But if you build logic on a false premise, you come to the wrong conclusion. Okay, every time. It, it may be, wow, oh yeah, look, this is built brick upon brick upon brick upon brick upon brick, but the foundation is sand, and it's going to collapse. Okay, it won't stand, and that's the way Calvinism is. So, uh, logical, but it's got a false premise, and it produces a false conclusion. Matthew 23, 37. Um, o Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under, his, under her wings, and ye would not. I can remember when I was a kid, some neighbors had a bunch of bantam chickens, okay, banties. And I can remember one time. Um, I don't know what happened, but there was something that the hen who had all these chicks uh, thought was, was dangerous. And this, this little bitty hen, you know, spreads her, her wings as well as she can, and all the chicks run under her wings, and they're sheltered under her wings. Well, Christ says, I would like to do this to the people of Jerusalem. Okay, I would like to save you from danger. I would like to protect you. I would like to do everything you need. I want to be as a mother to her children. Okay, I, but you won't let me. Ye would not. Instead of coming to the shelter, they're scattering in different directions. Okay, they're resisting the grace of God. Um, John, th John 5, 39 and 40. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. 
and ye will not come to me. Whoa, ye will not. Man has a will. Okay, man has a will. And they often exercise it, most of the time they exercise it the wrong way. By rejecting what God says. And here Christ says, look at the Bible. It tells you how to go to heaven. It tells you that the way to heaven is through him himself. But he says, you won't come to me. Ye will not that ye might have life. Okay, you could come, but you won't. And because you won't, you'll never have eternal life.